Now here in module nine, we'll talk more about quartiles. So it sounds like a fancy term, but it's not that fancy. Um, but let's let's uh, review a little bit that when we when we describe the distribution of a qu quantitative variable, we describe the overall pattern, which means shape, center, and spread. And before we talk a little bit about kind of the the steps that we do, we take to do so. So first, we want to graph the distribution just so we can see the shape, um, the center maybe, and depending on the shape and the spread. And then based on the shape and the spread, you can kind of tell if, what kind of center you want to use. Do you want to use the median or the mean like we talked about? Um, if there are outliers or the, the shape is not really symmetric, then you might want to use median. But once in a while, you can use, me use mean if it's fairly symmetric and there aren't a lot of outliers. Um, and of course, outliers is one thing you want to make note of as well. Um, so below, we'll talk about um, some exam scores, an example with exam scores and how interesting the median is even when two different examples and we'll also talk about quartiles and kind of def um, define what that is it's not too crazy it's, it sounds complicated but it's not that bad um, let's see here so consider the two following distributions of exam scores there are two different classes so an instructor is teaching two different classes um, and the exam scores have a median the same median so you think oh the classes pretty much did the same which in some you know in some senses is true but which distribution has more variability if I look at the top distribution, I see a big cluster of lots of dots in this dot plot, really close to that median. I mean, there are a few that are a little off over here to the left, a little a few that are off a little to the right. But for the most part, a lot of those guys are right there close to the median. Um, but on the other hand, on in class B down here, this bottom box plot, um, I see... In the bottom one, I think we see more variability. There are a few values that are, that are right on the median or just to the left, just to the right. But for the most part, all the dots, all the data values are off pretty far to the left or pretty far to the right. They're not, uh, there isn't a big cluster close to the median. Um, so that's, that's, that's one way you can measure variability, I guess. So the answer to this question depends on how, much, how we measure vari variability. Both distributions have the same range, so that makes sense. Yeah, the highest value is the same, the lowest value is the same. The range is the distance spanned by the data, which we saw before. It's the highest value subtracting the, the smallest value. We calculate the range by subtracting the minimum value from the maximum value. For both of these data sets, the range is 55. Here's how we calculate the range. Like, the highest, like we said, the highest score, 95 minus the lowest, is 40 which we, when you subtract them, you get 55. If we use the range to measure variability, we say the distributions have the same amount of variability. But the variability in the distributions differ when we look at how the data is distributed ab about the median. The first, the top dot, dot, date plot, dot plot, has a large proportion of its data close to the median, like we described. This is not true for set B. From this viewpoint, set A has less variability, the top one has less variability than the bottom one. So now we'll develop a way to measure the variability about the median. To do so, we use quartiles. A quartile, this is probably a good idea to write this down, this definition. A quartile marks, they divide the data set into four groups with equal counts. So we take, I guess it would be nice if the data was divisible by four, because you divide all your data values into four groups. The ones with the smallest values go first, that's the first quartile and then the ones with the, the second high, the smallest values go next, and so on and so forth. So that would be, yeah, that would be a good definition to write down, I think. Um, quartiles divide the data set into four groups with equal counts. That's probably the key words there, with equal counts. So here, in those, those dot plots above, they added dividers to show the quartile marks for the two data, um, the data sets of exam scores. Quartile, quartile marks divide the data set into four subgroups with the same number of individuals in each, each group. So maybe we'll really focus on one of these versus the other. Let's see. Um, let's look at this top one, class A. So notice, let's see, that these quartiles, the, the width of them is not equal, right? It's just the number of data values in them. So all the way from zero, a score of 0 to a score, I don't know, what's the score here? Um, it looks like it's down at like 72 maybe. Between 0 and 72, there are how many dots in there? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there are eight, eight individual data values in that first quartile. And then in the next small, there's a very small quartile here that's kind of very narrow gray box. 
there are eight values in, is in, in there as well. So even though the width of that quartile isn't the same, it has the some, same number of data values. And then the next quartile is tiny as well. It's right here. And I think there are eight data values in there as well. And then the very last quartile is this kind of wider gray rectangle. There should be eight values in there as well. So that just kind of shows that the two, I guess the two middle quartiles that are that are centered about the median. Yeah, we see that there's a there are a lot of data values close to the center because the two middle quartiles that are centered around that that median are very narrow. They're, they're, but they contain the same amount of data values as the other two large quartiles. But then on the other hand, on the bottom dot plot, the class B dot plot, the other class that this person is teaching, um, the width of each quartile is pretty much the same. So it looks like all the data values are spread pretty evenly. The, f the first quartile is this green width that I'm kind of measuring here very roughly. Um, and then the second quartile, <clears throat> excuse me, um, is a little bit narrower, but still not quite as narrow as the other one. And the third quartile is this pinkish one. Um, that one's that's pretty about much about the same width as the previous. Um, and then the very last one, <coughs> excuse me, is a little bit narrower. So that means the more the narrower the the quartile, the more data values concentrated in that quartile. I guess that's one one thing to maybe note. Um, I mean, you might have already yeah made that observation in your head, but <coughs> I'd say yeah, the narrower. Yeah, the narrower the quartile, the more concentrated, I guess I should, it's hard to read, but I wrote concentrated the data values. So the, the on the top dot plot, the leftmost quartile, the smallest quartile, there, there was a very wide quartile because all the data values aren't concentrated in a small area, they're spread out. But the two middle quartiles there, it's very concentrated with lots of values in a small space. They were all very close together. So down here it, note, it notes, for a data set, there is an equal amount of data in each quartile. Class A has 32 scores, so each quartile contains 8 scores. Class B has 20 scores, so each quartile contains 5 scores. They're just dividing the number of data values by 4 so they can put them into these quartiles. So it just, it just so happens that both of the, the number of data values in Class A and in Class B are divisible by 4. Um, the quartiles together with the minimum and maximum scores give the 5 number summary. So in, let's see, what am I going to do here, um, here, I'm going to get a different color, oh, yeah, so they, they're just listing kind of all the benchmark points here, the minimum, and then the end of quartile one, what is the data value that quartile one ends at? Quartile 2 ends at what data value? Quartile 3 ends at what data value? And then it, they could say quartile 4 ends at what data value, but really they just said what's what's the maximum value? Um, and then same thing in class B, but this kind of gives you, instead of having to see a visual, you can just kind of look at the values of where it ends and where it begins. And then same thing for class B. Um, you notice quartile 1 ended much sooner at 61 rather than 71. Quartile 2 ended in the same spot. Quartile 3, a little bit different, and then um, of course it ended at the highest, same highest point. The second quartile mark is the median. Some quartiles exhibit more variability in the data, even though quart each quartile contains the same amount of data. That's what we saw in this example. Um, for each example, 25%, which is one-fourth of the scores in class A, are between 40 and 71. There's a lot of variability in the first quartile, Q1. The eight scores in Q1 vary by 30 points. Compare this to the third quartile Q thief creep for class A. 25% of the scores in class A are between 75, sorry, 74.5 and 78.5. There's not too much variability in quartile 3. The eight scores in quartile 3 vary by only four points. How are quartiles used to measure variability about the median? They call it the interquartile range, IQR. The distance between the first and the third quartile marks. The IQR is a measure of the variability about the median. More specifically, the IQR tells us the range of the middle half of the data. Here's the IQR for these two distributions. So it's, yeah, Q3 minus Q1. And they listed those values up here at the top. Um, up here, yeah, where I messed up all this <laughs> drawing. Um, so in this case, class A 
was his its inner quartile range Q3 minus Q1 would be 78.5 minus 71, which is an interquartile range of 7.5. Um, and then class B had one uh, interquartile range of 28. That's a big difference, 7.5 versus 28. So as we observed earlier, class A has less variability about its median. Its interquartile range is much smaller. The middle 50% of the exam scores for every for class A vary only by 7.5 points, but the middle 50% of the exam scores for class B vary by 28 points.